Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time checking my channel out, you picked a great time to do it because this is a really important video. I want to tell you about my financial transformation. Now, if you have watched any of my videos prior to this, you might know that I had a really rough financial patch during the Great Recession, 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I mean, I was getting beat down. I got beat down all the way into bankruptcy. Coming out of bankruptcy, I decided to learn everything I possibly could about personal and later business finance. So I'm talking banks, credit cards, credit unions, personal loans, business loans, alternative lending, like non-for-profits, grants, you name it. I was trying to find out where the money was because I needed the money. I needed to level up my life. So I was able to successfully rebuild my financial life. I went from bankruptcy to credit scores in the 800s and it totally changed my life. It opened up many financial doors that would not have been open without the great credit that I was able to build. It gave me access to capital. That was something I was missing and had been missing for a long time. But during this rebuild, once I got to where I needed to be, I kind of started to slack up a little bit. I guess you could say I got a little bit comfortable and that's not always the best way to be. As a matter of fact, it's almost never the right way to be. So let's fast forward. It's 2019 and I'm ready to move from the residence that I was living in. Again, the recession beat me down and I was able to get my hands on this home as a distressed property through a bank because if you probably watch this channel on other videos, you also know that I've been a licensed real estate broker for a long time, 15 years to be exact, 16 come this summer. So I was living in this home that I was really ready to move out of. I just didn't have all the resources to do it. Now at the time, I had the great credit. I even had a little money saved up. I did not have a traditional job. I was self-employed. And if you've ever tried to get a home loan as a self-employed person, you know that that can be a little bit difficult. So I decided that I was gonna really buckle down and put some money together. So what I did was I cut all the fun out. Everything that I considered fun from going out to a restaurant, or a brewery to have some craft beer because I really like craft beer, to attending a sporting event, to travel. I mean, I just cut out anything other than the gym, which is $20 a month. Anything else, I pretty much cut it out. And I just dove deeper into financial literacy training. I saved every dime that I could for three years, three years. I didn't travel and I was a guy to travel, you know, fairly often, probably three to five times per year. And I cut it completely out. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything fun. Okay. And what I'm telling you is that this may be something that you could think about doing because it didn't kill me. So you can see I'm sitting right here. It didn't kill me. I cut out fun for three years. I saved. I worked as much as I could. I looked for every dime that was available on the market. I haven't got a grant during the uh, pandemic, like a real estate broker grant. I mean, I went after everything. Now, what it enabled me to do in the end is purchase another home. I was able to get an alternative kind of loan, but I was able to put a really large down payment on a home. And it's not even, you know, it's not a castle. It's a modest home. I bought a very modest home. As a matter of fact, it looks a lot like the home that's on your screen right now. It's just a basic, nice, modest, single family brick home, but it's mine. And you know what? I was able to put down so much money on it and was able to save so much money that now I'm truly going to be able to use that home as an asset in a way that most people aren't able to, because I'm on a track to pay that entire home off by putting such a big down payment down and continuing to be aggressive with saving I'm in a position to pay that home off in a very short period of time. Let's just say 
I'm probably going to be able to cut my 30 year mortgage by 90%. Okay. What that is going to allow me to do is two things. One, I could take the money that was going to be going to a mortgage every single month. And I can actually put that money into investments. So the money that was going to principal and interest, let's just say that it was $1,400 principal and interest and the rest taxes and insurance. Sure. I still got to pay the taxes and insurance, but I can take that money that was going to principal and interest. And now that money can be in ETF stock funds, high yield savings accounts, crypto, other real estate or whatever, you know, I want it to, to be in, but it can be working for me. The second part is by having the good credit, what that allows me to do is to now refinance the home after it's completely paid off, take out a small mortgage. We're going to call it about mm, the home's probably worth about a little under $300,000. So we're going to call it 20% of the value of the home, probably about 50 to $60,000. And now I can actually invest that money. And let's say I'm paying, we're going to call it 6% interest. I feel that I can get 12 to 15% return using the methods that I use. So now I can actually use that home to make money with, to help accelerate my ability to buy my time back. Cause I don't really like to use the term retire. I'm not looking to ever really retire. I just want to buy control of my time. So, Hey, this was on my mind and this video was straight off the cuff. I just wanted to talk about how if you are willing to buckle down for a short period of time and trust me guys, two, three years, it'll go back. It'll go back so fast. You'd be amazed on how much money that you can save toward whatever your dream target is to help you get there even faster. So, Hey, I hope that that video inspired somebody. I'll be back real soon with my next video in my credit series. As far as this is part three coming up, which is length of credit history. But until got till, till then guys, I hope that this video was found useful by all that watched and class is dismissed.